I think, stand it. Are, are you this? ready, Mike? Make it full screen. Is this All right. To to make, this is okay, so we're going to call our meeting to order in like one second. Wait, but that's just a picture. As soon as I get the. Is this supposed to be a video? Because it's not a video. That's not a video. It's literally this picture. Uh oh. That might be something. Is there anything else on the flash drives? Are you ready? Okay. Is that a flash drive? All right. Hello, and welcome to the Thursday, April 12th regular meeting of the school committee. I will ask that you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I will read through the agenda pretty quickly, and then we have a lot of exciting recognitions. We're working on some technology issues to my left, so we'll get those straightened out. Um, we did call our meeting to order at 6.30. We had need of an executive session for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the HTA, because having the discussion in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position. So we've completed our executive session, and we are now um, moving into our regular meeting. So we'll start with recognitions, followed by our first opportunity for public comment. Following that, we have reports to the school committee. We'll have our student council report, our acting superintendent report, school committee chair report, liaison reports, and an athletic winter update from Ms. King. Under new business, we'll have school committee policy JLA wellness for our first reading, school committee policy BIA new school committee member orientation for a, school, a first reading, and then under old business, we'll have school committee policy ADA philosophy for a second reading, school committee policy ADDA criminal record information for a second reading, school committee policy KF community use of school facilities for a second reading, and school committee policy IJNDB internet acceptable use for a third reading, JIC, policy JICFB bullying for a second reading. Um, then we have a few overnight travel requests to review and a Gale Associates contract amendment um, to approve. Following that, we'll have our second opportunity for public comment, items by, by consensus, and we are working hard to adjourn by 9.55 because it is Mr. Terosian's birthday and he is filming the school committee meeting tonight on his birthday. Um, so without further ado, I would like to start off the recognition section by asking the girls varsity basketball team if they would come up and tell us about their season and be recognized. So come on up girls and bring your coaches. We'll have you come over here because there are mics and those are for HCAM so people at home can hear you. Just turn them around. You guys can all stand right there however you want to do it. So welcome. We wanted to invite you tonight because you guys had an unbelievable season. You made it so far. Um, so we just want to recognize you, want to hear a little bit about it, and I will turn it over to you to talk. All right. So this season was a successful one for us. We finished our season with a record of 22-5. and five. We were Tri-Valley League champs, uh, Westboro tournament champs, sectional champs for the Central Division II bracket, <laughs> and we made it to the state final game, and we are Tri-Valley League champs, <laughs> and we had a lot of fun along the way. Um, some of our favorite moments were probably our bus ride sing-alongs. Um, we pretty much memorized every word to It's Tricky by the end of the season, um, and also to us being a hiller is definitely just like being part of such an awesome like community and being part of a family. Um, all the sports teams are really close with each other. And just like with the school in general, everyone's super supportive. So, yeah. Awesome. I just have to say, I was at the final game, which did not end the way that you wanted to. But it was an amazing game. You guys played so well. And I think the part that got me the most was at the end when they called the captains out to accept the trophy, you brought your whole team. Didn't even bat an eye. And it just really, I thought, was a statement to the way that you guys operated as a team and the care that you showed for each other and the respect that you had for each other and for your coaches. And I was just so proud of you in that moment. So you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if you want to go back down to your senior dinner, you're welcome to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Let's get a Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Oh, yes. 
It does sound. They have good music downstairs oh, here in the background. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. All right. And then I'm going to beg the indulgent, uh, indulgence of the DI team, too, because we have some senior captains that are here for the athletics um, winter update. So if we can let them go next, they can go back down and join their classmates. So come on up. All you guys can come. Yeah. Yeah. And how about we'll go over here so we can hear you. Welcome. Do you want the full winter update or just for them? And then, or just them to speak and then we can do that Is it how? Yeah. So, well, let's just do that. And then, then we can put our full attention on the DI team. Sure? So yeah. Okay. Be good. All right. Great. Um, well, thank you so much for having us here tonight to provide a winter sports update. And um, like we've done in the past, I could sit here and rattle off things, but I think it's um, most compelling to hear our student athletes talk a little bit about their seasons um, and just share a little bit about their experience. So um, we could probably bring a lot of students in, but I know that you, uh, you all have a lot to cover. So um, tonight we chose to have Owen Delaney here, who is representing the ice hockey team, and we have Jack Brennan and Abby Fisher here to represent Swim and Dive. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the other teams after, but I'm going to let them kick it off with a little bit of a recap from their season. So go ahead, Owen. All right, so going into the season this year, is no secret. There was definitely some spots that needed to be filled. We had a pretty large senior class that graduated, a lot of talented players. So we knew a lot of the younger guys, some guys who maybe didn't get as much playing time last year would have to step up. And really from the beginning of the season, that's exactly what they did. So it was really an awesome season to be a part of. Um, you know, like the atmosphere at all the practices was just very competitive. Um, no one spot like was safe. So everyone was competing. And I think that it attributed to a lot of our success. Um, I think the most memorable part was definitely winning the Tri-Valley League this year, because this was the first time in program history that we were able to do this. Um, you know, in the past, it's always usually the Division II schools um, that usually win it. So it's, it was really cool to win it. First time in program history. I think it's really awesome that we got to make history like that, keep the program going in that way. And also throughout the season, I got a, it really showed me what it means to be a Hiller. Like the support I felt, I um, was battling with an injury second half of the season, and the support I felt about trying to get me back was just crazy. Like, the whole program was coming together, trying to do whatever they can. You know, it just shows it's not – there's not, like, a hockey program, a basketball program. It's one big program. Everyone works. The will to succeed doesn't just, like, stop within your sport. You want everyone to succeed. So it's really just a family atmosphere, and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. That's, awesome. That's great. What Owen won't tell you is that he battled that injury, and I saw him working out every single day in the gym after school sweating profusely because he couldn't <laughs> skate so he real it was a work ethic that is rare and was able to make it back for the first playoff game and scored the two first goals in the playoff game uh -huh. so I'll brag for him nice. a little bit because he's a very humble team first guy um, but it was remarkable and an incredible leader for his team and for the program so thanks thank you all right okay just so reintroduce yourself so they have you I'm Abby I'm Jack Brennan. And so we just want to share a little bit about the swim team season. Um, our league record was 6-1, and one, and we only lost that one meet, which is very close to Ashland, and it's always close with them every year. It's always great to get to swim against them again. But luckily, we came back at the TBL championship meet. We won that. Um, and throughout the course of the season, we were very successful in six school records fell, including all three of the girls' relay records. Um, a little bit um, to touch in on postseason, the girls placed fifth at the Bayview Invitational. They placed um, second at the South Sectionals, and they came in third at Division Two States. And the boys team qualified um, very large for the postseason meets, and there were 19 members of the team total that made postseason, and there were quite a few that placed top eight in sectionals and states. Um, we also had the TVL Swimmer of the Year, Andrea Way, and the TVL Diver of the Year, Maddie Souths. Um, Andrea received an automatic All-American nomination, and Maddie also achieved an All-American consideration score. 
In addition, we had eight first team TVL All Stars and five second team All Stars. Wow. Um, a little bit about our team and what we do. Our um, we have a really good team environment. It's um, you know it's a big family. We um, twice a year we volunteer at the Title Nine Triathlon, the women's triathlon at um, at the state park, and we help out with that. And at our spaghetti dinners, we have um, project um, project just because donation collections and. This is our first year having a team mascot, which was our uh, assistant coaches, um, Karen, her dog Piper. So it's fun. <laughs> Just therapy dog. Uh, we are especially grateful to our assistant coaches, the administration, for their support because swim meets are not something that you always expect everyone to come to, but everybody was there, and it was amazing to have such support from everyone. Miss um, King, our athletic director, um, and especially to our head coach, Jeff Libby, who was named the TVL and Boston Globe Coach of the Year. We were very proud of him, especially considering this is his first year in that role. Wow. Um, so to talk a little bit about why we are proud to be Hillers and why what being a Hiller means to us. Um, this was a hard year for the swim team because we lost one of our teammates and a dear friend, Brad Canty. The team came together during this tough time to support each other, something that helped us all. We were able to honor him in many ways throughout the season, especially by living and swimming in his name, but also raising mo uh, money for a scholarship fund. We, collabor we collaborated with Mrs. Canty and the school administration to raise money for the Canty Underdog Scholarship Fund and to plat um, coordinate a plaid for Brad Day to show our support and honor his memory. He was an instrum instrumental member of the team and someone whose life significantly impact impacted each and every one of us with his unwavering kindness and love for everyone. Brad Canty defined for us what it meant to be a true Hiller, and sadly, his, uh, his death brought us together a lot closer. Thank you all for your willingness to speak. Um, obviously, incredibly um, challenging yet successful season for the swim and dive team, um, and in being witness to a number of their meets, and particularly their senior meet where they honored Brad, um, it was... I would, the most moving athletic event I've been a part of at um, the high school so far to have every student athlete share uh, their own personal memory of Brad with Brad's family. Um, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. Um, coach didn't prepare me that I was going to need tissues when I came, but it was um, the level of maturity, compassion, and um, just the team spirit that was demonstrated by this group was unparalleled so um, really appreciate you guys being here and sharing and um, especially while I have this group right up here I think it's also really important to acknowledge that um, so many of our teams and particularly our student athletes and these three up here really embody what it means to be a student athlete um, they work so hard in the classroom they are committed they are managing their time in a way that is Remarkable in a way that when I was a student athlete in high school, we did not have the same demands that these student athletes have. And it is just incredible to see the level of excellence they bring to every area of their life and, and to the community. So I um, wanted to really take a moment to acknowledge you all for your athletic accomplishments, but also for what you do in the classroom and the community. So really, really appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to let them. Yeah. Go, if that's okay, and yes, I just want to say congratulations. congratulations though to all of you. You you guys have a lot to be proud of, not just on the field. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you here. very Thank much. You. I'm happy to. If there's other yeah, groups wanna... that need to go, I can wait if, from the, where it's on the agenda. All happy right. to do that. That's fine. Yeah, Absolutely. because I think the kids are all so Absolutely. excited to go home and do homework before <laughs> vacation starts. So why don't we have um, our DI team come up? And we are really excited to hear. Uh, it's, I keep saying team. There are a lot of teams represented. So please come on up and tell us all about your success. <laughs> Hi, uh, hi. hi guys, I think um, before we get into it, I want to talk about Hockington DI, and uh, for those of you who don't know what DI is, um, let me give you a little bit of an explanation. So uh, Destination Imagination is an international program 
that focuses on um, creativity and learning and teamwork and it has programs that start as young as the second grade and goes all the way up through the university level. Um, DI has six challenges that teams of kids can choose. Some of these are engineering or structural or fine arts, even improv. Um, this team uh, here, it's a Hockington High School senior level team, chose the service learning uh, challenge, which in addition to the DI challenge, they also run a service project um, to uh, aid and help uh, uh, somebody in the community or an organization within the community. So uh, uh, to give you an idea of what DI uh, encompasses, um, in September the teams form and sometimes they're the same team members and sometimes it's brand new. Um, for this particular team, some of them have been together since grade two. Oh, wow. Okay, and they've been doing DI for, you know, eight, nine, ten years or will by the time they, that, that they graduate. So they'll choose a challenge and they work on that challenge for six months. Sometimes they meet once a week and then tour Towards um, the end of the DI season, when they're getting ready for regionals, they may meet seven days a week for hours on end. Um, what they're asked to do is to take a challenge and to work on that challenge and many aspects of the challenge for that period of time to come up with their unique solution. And then they're asked to present that, uh, everything about their project within an eight-minute uh, script and uh, hit all of the elements of the project uh, that they're going to be scored on. So in addition to their central challenge, this six month long project, uh, they also are tasked with an instant challenge where they go in as a team uh, to a room and they're presented with, an, uh, usually it's a structural challenge or it may be an improv challenge. Um, and this may be something like um, uh, there are materials available for them that may include wooden dowels and pipe cleaners and tin foil, pieces of paper, newspaper, and they're given uh, five minutes to build a freestanding structure that resembles the Eiffel Tower and can hold as much weight as possible. And, uh, and they're given that challenge with the stopwatch and off they go. So, um, you know, what they're looking for is creativity. They're looking for, obviously, the smarts to figure out a project. And they're also looking for um, incredible teamwork. So for Hawkington, we had a couple dozen teams compete in DI throughout the season, five of which won their regional tournaments, that's first place, and were invited to compete at Worcester Polytech for the state championship. And uh, those five teams, three of, uh, of those were from the high school, the senior level, one was from the middle school, and one was elementary from Hopkins. And uh, this team, uh, and I'll let them talk about their project, uh, they actually um, won a very special award while they were there, and they can talk about what that is. It's, it's rare to see this at a state level, so it's, it's really nice to see them win. Um, and also had scores that qualified them uh, to go on and represent Hockington at the global finals for Destination Imagination, competing against teams from all around the United States and all around the globe. Um, with dozens of countries uh, being represented uh, in May in Knoxville, Tennessee. Cool. So, um, well, that's it. No. <laughs> um, Thank it, you. No. Yeah. So, Aaron, <laughs> you should probably talk about um, the community project that you guys did and why you chose that, sure. that particular community project. So, we've done like a plethora of different activities throughout the past, but one of the recurring themes we've usually done is uh, helping veterans, particularly homeless veterans. So, my dad actually just became technically a veteran last year. Now, you want to view it, if you just like probably like six months ago when he was in the Air Force for 43 or 44 years, not quite sure on the number. So kind of military veteran connection was sort of brought in through me and some of us have like other connections through family friends and other extended family. So the kind of military patriotic theme has been present prevalent throughout our DI seasons, I say. And this year we helped Veterans Inc. in actual Worcester, right next to WPI, so they're kind of familiar with each other. And we helped them with funds supplies and we basically spread awareness. So we were actually at MLK Day just in January and we set up a table with the booth and we got to meet a lot of people and hear their stories and tell them about homeless veterans because it's not a particularly well-known issue. You know, people just assume that it's kind of just like, there's not a big prevalence in them, but again, there are 
over 2,000 homeless veterans in Massachusetts alone, and there's about 40,000 estimated in the whole entire country. So it kind of is an issue, and we're here to just raise awareness to a particular sect of the you know really brave and courageous people that have served our country, and then just to be in that situation, we just think is terrible and should not have to affect anyone who served the country. So, did I miss anything? No. Um, so their um, Renaissance Award that they won was for outstanding uh, engineering and design, and they were actually awarded this based on a 3D gearbox that they designed. Um, and uh, maybe Neil, you can yeah. talk about how that was put together because there was a Hockington High School connection here. Yes. Yeah, so me and Awen drove around probably like three towns. Oh, almost um, using half a tank of gas, looking for particular gears. Yes, these were not close towns. Like I literally <laughs> scaled up and down Massachusetts, like the Tom and Jerry cartoon. It was <laughs> so we couldn't find like the partic particular gears that we need. So then we just went to the high school and 3D printed them with um, mm -hmm. advice from our uh, engineering teacher, Mr. Scott, who told us like how to print 3D gears. So I learned how to do that, cool. and then Aaron found a software to find a gear ratio that we needed. So I had to convert that gear ratio format into a 3D format so that I can use a 3D printer. And then it took around like five hours to six hours to figure out how to print it and to actually print the 3D gears. And then the gearbox itself, we didn't really have metal pieces, which makes making a gearbox much easier like robotics. So we had to use cardboard, duct tape, and dowels to fit all, fit all of them together to make it actually function all together. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> and it was like, it's only about like this big actual component of the motor, but that probably took about 20 hours total to make. So it looks, you know, you can't buy it at Walmart, so you kind of have to figure out what you're going to do. And yes, it was an achievement, and we were really proud of it. Let's hope it doesn't break on the way to Knoxville. Yeah. <laughs> so you couldn't f find what you wanted, so you designed and so you built designed what it. you wanted, basically. basically. Yeah, there's That's like only three types of gears that people sell, because there's really not, I mean, there's no gear store. No one really needs <laughs> gears, I guess, so naturally there's like only a few places you can go, and we went to some pretty weird places to see if we could <laughs> maybe find some gears, only to come back, get a Starbucks, and realize, you know, if I was going to print them ourselves. So wow. all's Great. well that ends well, I guess. A part of their uh, presentation also involved um, uh, multimedia and um, a, a digital animation that was put together. Yeah. They were actually asked to come up with um, infographics uh, to talk about their uh, project, um, the uh, community need, you know, so a little bit about the homeless veterans, but then um, also talk about what they did over the course of the six months. And so uh, Patrick actually had um, uh, the lead on that, so why don't you talk a little bit about what you did? Uh, yeah, so over the course of a couple months, I uh, worked with softwares through Adobe and Final Cut Pro and was able to create an anima well, a couple animations um, as the background for um, our infographics that were going to be moving um, that we would project uh, when we were there. Uh, we also uh, created um, a couple more infographics that were in the shape of gears that weren't um, electronic, they were just in our set piece. So do you want to, like, speaking of gears, we're talking a lot about it, but do you want to sort of, maybe you or Sophie could talk about the theme of our presentation itself? Um, okay, well, um, our theme was steampunk, or we called it steampunk <laughs> grunge, mm -hmm. which is kind of how we designed our props with more, like, metallic colors, like copper, silver, gold, and also, like, kind of like browns and grays and everything. Um, and so for the gears, we actually made um, three gears to represent the goals for our project, for raising funds, collecting supplies, and spreading awareness. And the gears, they were around like this big and they lit up. And then throughout our presentation, we had to um, earn the gears that like went along with our script and kind of like the quest we were on. So like when we completed a certain portion of our project, we would earn one of the gears and then they would all kind of go together to represent the finishing of our project. Our presentation, it modeled basically everything we had done so far, but in a creative way, instead of just telling them we did this, this, and this, we created the whole steampunk design and based our presentation off of that. And so the three things that, like Sophie mentioned, um, what we wanted to do was raise funds, raise um, awareness, and collect supplies. And so uh, for funds, what we did was 
we did a Skies Zone fundraiser because we did that in seventh grade and it was really successful, but I think we got a little less cute, and so it wasn't as good this year, <laughs> but we're still hoping to try again before May. Um, for supplies, uh, we actually collaborated with Student Council. They happened to be thinking about wanting to help veterans at the same time that we began studying our project. And so we collaborated to run a drive here at the school, and then we, um, we offered to bring the supplies we collected to uh, Veterans Inc. And then the last thing was um, spreading awareness. And like we mentioned before, we set up a table at Martin Luther King Day in January. And we talked to all the people who came by, and we explained what Veterans Inc. was and the need there. And after we did all of that, and after we competed at the regional and state level competitions, uh, we earned a spot at Global Finals held in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, there we will be competing against teams from all 50 states and 15 countries. Um, we will also get the chance to learn about innovative technologies from companies like NASA and the Mayo Clinic, um, go to workshops, seminars, and just compete and show off our skills on a global level. It's phenomenal. pretty fun. Excused absence from school. <laughs> <laughs> Not even going to lie. Well, we'll see if we approve it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so Very for some impressive. of us, it's our third time actually going. So it would be nice to see we have a few friends who are also going. So we're going to get in touch. And there's a lot of fun activities planned for the week. Great. Great. Absolutely incredible. Is there a video that y you had? There is. Do we figure it's, it out? It was, it's still photos. Is oh, it's still photos. Yeah, okay. I think we could only find still photos okay, there. Okay, that's fine. Um, th this photo is uh, after they won their Renaissance Award and their third place award at Worcester Polytech, um, just after they found out they were going to Globals. Wow. Yeah. Nice. That's why we're a little tired and stressed. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of fired up. And though. happy. <laughs> This is absolutely phenomenal. Really, just really, really impressive creativity, dedication, yeah, time right. management skills, and thank you for not challenging us to build an Eiffel Tower. I'm not yes. sure yeah. that we could we do that. We would have failed that one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and these are uh, the members the of the five Hockington teams that oh. are at WPI. Well, I'm sure you're a big inspiration to the younger kids. Um, you yeah. know, you've stuck it with it for so long. You've been so successful. Um, that's a huge amount of time. I'm quite sure it's not the only thing that you do outside of school either. Um, so this is really remarkable. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you for Thank having you. me. And you have to tell us how you do. When, what's the date again? May 23rd. Yeah. May 23rd. All right. Well, I know you'll let us know, Karen, how yeah. they do. All right. Absolutely. Good, good luck. Yes, Thank good luck. You Congratulations. So that was amazing. All right. Kind of hard to follow that. Um, did we have any of our National Merit finalists come today? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. OK. Yeah. All right, so um, unfortunately, that's the end of our recognition period. It's always my favorite part of the whole um, meeting. No offense to the rest of you. <laughs> what an impressive <laughs> None take. we've had. Absolutely remarkable. This is a great night. Um, so why don't we ask, this is our first opportunity for public comment. If there's anybody here from the public that wants to comment on anything, don't see anybody. Um, so why don't we actually take Miss King's report first so she doesn't have to sit through Orlation. all of the rest of them, this being her third night in a row out. So if you want to come back up and finish the athletics report, that would be great, or athletics winter update. Thanks again so much for having me here. Um, I know it's more interesting to hear from the students, so I'll try and make my portion quick, but they're, they're more fun to listen to. Um, but we just um, chose to select a few students just to give you a little bit of a recap on their season in here a little bit more intimately um, about their athletic experience. And um, similar to the fall season, the winter season was another really successful run for the Hillers. Um, we went all the way till the last possible game. Um, hockey had advanced really far and with girls basketball going all the way to the end. Um, they played on a Saturday and spring sports starts that m next Monday. So um, it's, it's, and that has happened now two seasons in a row with girls volleyball having gone to the state championship as well. So that's um, really unique actually. And I, I try to tell our student athletes that the, this isn't typical, um, and I think that they're just 
they work so hard. They have a really high standard for what they do, um, and they're starting to not know any differently. And I'm like most teams, individuals never make it this far in an entire high school career. So, uh, but I think they they get it a little bit because they seem to really be treasuring the moment. So um, I'm just going to give you a few highlights from each team. Certainly, if you have any questions um, or want me to elaborate anything on anything, I'm happy to do that. Um, but I'm going to skip over swim and dive hockey and girls basketball because you heard a little bit from them um, and they're very successful seasons. Um, I'll start with wrestling. Um, our wrestling team this year, I thought one of the coolest parts with the wrestling team was that it had a record number of participants. Um, and that is a credit to the leadership on the team. Um, the captains, Brennan Cochio and Hunter Goodrow, are just they embody what it means to be a Hiller, inclusive, hardworking, humble, um, all those fantastic attributes. And they, they really brought the team together. And I also wanted to, again, thank you for last year approving a request to expand middle school wrestling to the sixth grade because there was a lot of growth in that program as well. Um, and I, I think that it's just a, a really great inclusive sport. Um, and our coach, Tim Nelson, is absolutely fantastic so it was a really successful season for the wrestling team they had four state qualifiers um and just i think the cohesiveness within the group was evident if, if you ever got to come to a meet um let's see um in terms of boys basketball um the boys basketball team had a really interesting run this year they started off struggling a little bit uh, in terms of a record and then they went on this crazy run almost to the point where their last game of the season they were vying for a league title oh. so it was really fun really exciting um, again the leadership on that team um, the captains were Zach Sasitsky, Tom Leone and Michael Ionelli um, just for those of you who might know them they are again absolutely amazing kids who are role models and who were really tough. I think you, they're these mild-mannered kids off the court, and then the second they step on the court, they're tough, they work hard, and they just kind of make this transition that's that's cool to see that you can be a sort of humble, reserved person and then really thrive athletically and, and be, you know, sort of embody that toughness. So they, they did that. Um, they made it to the postseason, and they unfortunately lost, but they they had a really successful season, and I think that the team really gelled together and was inclusive of its younger players and student athletes, which says a lot about, about the team and the leadership. Um, the girls' indoor track team capped off an undefeated regular season with a a really dominant performance at the Tri-Valley League meet. They won the championship, um, tons of school records, lots of all-stars, um, and they had kids qualifying for, you know, the state the state races, the nationals, regionals, and they, they really just every year are a dominant presence in our school. And I think if I was to say the sport that has the most athletes it's track by far and sometimes because of the nature of it it's not necessarily the most spectator friendly sport it doesn't always get the recognition that it deserves and um, our girls track team particularly has is just at the top of the league all the time and is a consistent presence and represents Hopkinton really really well um, and this was the first um, year under our, the co our new coach Jean Can and she was a tremendous leader for these for these young ladies so wanted to congratulate them publicly um, the boys track team also had an amazing season they worked so hard they finished second um, at the TVL meet and had a, a really strong regular season um, Nate Pucci was a state champ um, they they went on to um, have some student athletes qualify for postseason beyond that Tri-Valley um, championship and another very very large group where it can be really hard to manage for coaches just because there's over 100 kids on a team and hard to lead for captains and somehow they do it and they do it flawlessly and it's actually quite an amazing spectacle if you come after school and you watch the track team practicing and integrating in the gym with all the other teams that are in there it looks kind of like a madhouse but it's I would say it's pretty organized chaos they do a great job of it so um, wanted to give real kudos to the boys and girls track team 
um, because though they're separate entities, they work really well together and the coaches are coaching both the males and the females. So um, they do an amazing, amazing job and just overall had an incredibly successful season. Um, wanted to acknowledge our cheerleading team also for the first time in a number of years. They made it all the way to states, um, something that they were really proud of. They had a young team. They uh, had some new cheerleaders who had never cheered before. So there's a lot that goes into that in terms of learning how to stunt and some of the acrobatics and trusting someone who's never cheered before to hold you up in a uh, pose that's really high off the ground <laughs> um, and so there's just a lot of values that the girls learned and for them to qualify for states with such a young and inexperienced team was an incredible accomplishment so wanted to take a m moment to acknowledge them and also the senior captain Lisa Breton Lisa has been a two-year captain by herself um, on a team that's had a lot of transition and she's been the constant and she is a fantastic leader who again welcomed in younger student athletes and made it a fun atmosphere to be a part of. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge our girls ice hockey team who it's a co-op with Dover Sherborne um, and they've struggled a little bit from a record standpoint um, but when I'm checking in with the girls and I go to their games and I see them play you can see how much fun they're having. They have a fantastic coach who um, is hired by Dover Sherborne but stays in really close communication with me because we comprise half of the team. And the girls would just, there was a buzz around school. Um, they would be so excited for their games, and I think they really enjoyed the experience of being able to work with other student athletes from another town um, and it's I think especially cool that it's a Tri-Valley town that we have that co-op with um, and just that collegiality and sportsmanship between two towns that compete on in all our other sports was was really cool to see and um, just an individual acknowledgement for the girls ice hockey team our goalie was a freshman Kristen McCluskey and um, that's a hard uh, it's hard to try out for a team as a freshman regardless. Um, she started in goal. She was absolutely unstoppable, um, and it was it was amazing to watch her. She was really a force, and she earned all-star honors, which is a huge deal for a freshman, a huge deal for a goalie. Um, and so I think the future is really bright for them, and the girls just reported having so much fun enjoying each other and really bonded well they take a nice trip to Martha's Vineyard together where they're where they play a few games over there so just a positive experience overall um, so those are those are some of the specific highlights of the season but um, what I think some of the student athletes that spoke before captured is something that you can't necessarily list in an accolade um, it's just the feel that happens around this school when athletic events are going on um, and the students are supporting each other. They just come together in a way that is so fun to sort of step back and witness and be a part of. And it, it makes me envious in a little way. I'm like, oh, this is the best. You guys are having, they just are getting those best years of their lives together and to watch them do it in a way that is fun, supportive of one another, to see them all at each other's events. Um, it's, it's really just a cool showing from them and I think you know certainly I'm here to talk about athletics but when you go to any of the other events at school whether it's a robotics competition or a choral production or a talent show or band um, you're seeing the crossover in all of the students who are part of that are also part of athletics and it's so um, I think it's a really amazing part of our culture that there's not a divide between your extracurricular activities. It's encouraged to be part of all of those things and to excel in the classroom and to give back to your community. And I think that that's something that I feel really grateful that this school and community fosters and supports and allows. Um, it's not necessarily that way in every community. So um, I think just the spirit that we've had there this year, and, and I will really quickly just call out this senior class this is really a standout senior class they are a unique group of young people who have a maturity that is just it's it's really kind of indescribable and when you see it in action as I'm sure all of you have at one point or another it's it it leaves you feeling really good that that's sort of the future that's that's coming up through the pipeline so um, I'm just really proud to work with 
these students with an amazing group of coaches who are so dedicated. Um, and I really appreciate the opportunity from you as the school committee to allow me a few minutes to, to brag about them a little bit because they, they are doing amazing work here and I hope having a great experience. So it's, it's a fun ride. So we hope to have a really great spring and that we get to give you a really awesome report about that. So Thank any you. questions? Thank or? You. I just want to say I love everything that you have to say. I love that you come and you take the time out of your night to talk to us. But I also I really appreciate how much you bring to the athletic program as a whole and how these kids really feel connected to you and how you really set a tone in the school and with the athletes. And it's not just about being excelling at a sport, but it's carrying it over into their lives in different ways and just – I, I appreciate that so much and what you bring to the school and to the district. Also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. You've changed the game. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Well, thank you for all of your support. You've been incredibly supportive of all my initiatives <laughs> in the first <laughs> two years that I'm clogging up your school committee no, time. So <laughs> it's easy to so much. Much. So thank you very much. Oh, and, thank you um, all. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, <laughs> but you're certainly not required. Okay. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Have a night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you girls here for the student council report? I'm so sorry, I skipped right over you. So come right on up. Welcome. <laughs> I know, you look a little familiar. Well, welcome back and welcome. Thank you for being here. Can you just introduce yourselves too? So we like to have your names in our minutes. Um, I'm Emma Edwards. I'm Eva Caravilla. Ooh, that's loud. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're talking a little bit about what happened this week and what's coming up. So we had an Alice drill earlier this week, which I think went successfully and it worked well. Um, I'm glad that we have those. I think that kind of helps make everyone feel more calm and comfortable in the school environment. And then last night we had the jazz concert, which I know a lot of people enjoyed and was like really surprised by the talent and impressed. Um, as you can hear right now, we have the 50 days till graduation night dinner, which I know a lot of seniors look forward to. Um, I feel like it can kind of be surreal that senior year is ending, so it's nice that they have these events to kind of bring them closer together before they go their separate ways. Um, and then we have a Hillary Day tomorrow, which is well-loved by everyone, including myself. <laughs> I cannot wait to sleep in tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I cannot wait even more for break next week. That's and it. it's a homework-free break, so that's really nice, except for AP classes, but that's the nature of it. But um, other than that, um, you've heard a lot about the winter sports season and how successful they were, but now spring sports is starting. And actually, I couldn't go the first week of track because of DI, but now I'm excited to go back. Um, and they've already had a bunch of games so far, so softball and baseball, they've won their first games against Medfield, as has boys lacrosse, so things are looking good. Um, I'm sure Miss King will have a good report for you when she comes back, when the season progresses. Um, and then the last thing is that uh, student council and some other organizations in school, like the Peer Leaders Club, they're going to be running Teachers Appreciation Week, which is May 7th to 11th, so... Well, thank you, girls, especially being here on the eve of vacation and the Hiller Day. So we really appreciate it. It's always great to hear from you what's happening in the high school. We really, this is a highlight for us every time. So thank you very much for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a great break. Yep. Enjoy, Enjoy sleeping in time yes. tomorrow morning. <laughs> Enjoy the no Precious homework. Um, okay. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. I Hello, so. Dr. Kavanaugh. I have just a little bit. Um, so our students have been taking MCAS tests now, and they are making great progress. Um, I was at the center school today where I encountered a couple of first graders who told me that when you get to third grade MCAS, it's great because they keep giving you breaks and they give you candy. Oh. So I said, oh, I might try taking the test, and they both looked at me and said, you're much too old. So. <laughs> <laughs> not sure their third grade friends would agree with that assessment. <laughs> no, <MCAS>. probably not. <laughs> the rumor mill is what it is. And the other thing, I just want to give a, sort of a shout out to the Elmwood School today. Yeah. Kenyon Run a Day was absolutely amazing. Ann Carver and her team, I mean, it was a, a beautiful presentation. Just goosebumpy and what an opportunity for those kids. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. Well, thank you. All right. Well, we'll go right into my chair report. I also was going to recognize Kenyon Runner Day. It absolutely 
you know, of the many perks that there are to being on the school committee, I think that's arguably the best. It's so, it's such a great day and just a, a, an unbelievable opportunity for the kids to meet world-class athletes, bump fist with them, run with them. It's outstanding, and they did a wonderful job. Um, the other – too, though, the one thing that strikes me every year we get to – we're fortunate enough to get to go is – it seems like such a great opportunity for the athletes as well. Yeah, the, they the seem genuine joy that they seem to take. I mean, today they spontaneously got up and started dancing yeah. with the students. I mean, that That's doesn't cool. that doesn't happen if it's something that they just sort of have to do as part of their John Hancock responsibilities, exactly. right? I mean, they talk every year about how much they enjoy it, and you can really see that at the event. So, as great as it is for the second and third graders, it's clear the athletes enjoy it as much too. Yeah, you're right. That's true. Um, so the other thing I'll mention is we did we had our date with the Appropriations Committee on Monday. So Carol and Nancy and I were there, and um, we presented our budget and our capital items. Um, and we have a few follow-up questions to answer regarding the turf field project. But otherwise, I think um, they'll be taking action on our budget um, and our other capital items possibly tonight. So we're moving along in the process towards town meeting. Um, I also will talk about the turf forum, but I'll do that when we get to our liaison reports. So I don't think I have anything. We, we were very light on, on emails this week, so I don't have a lot of um, emails to report either. So um, I will just read that I have approved for payment the accounts payable warrants 18-065, 18-066, 18-067, and 18-068. All of the warrants have been included in your packet. I have also approved for payment the payroll warrant S18020 and S1820A. All warrants have been included in your packet. And then finally, um, the Elmwood SOI has been successfully voted, signed, uploaded, completed, submitted. So we're in the queue. I don't have any idea whether they'll take action or not, but that item has been checked off all of our lists. Um, so thank you very much for to Dr. McLeod for finishing that project up um, as she is continuing her work here with the district. So liaison reports, do you want to start? We'll start down with Jen. And sure. I have a couple quick ones. Um, we had our first um, elementary school building committee meeting at Marathon School in the conference room at Marathon School on um, earlier this week. So that was very cool. There was a lot of a lot, lot of selfies going on in that room as people took pictures <laughs> of the first meeting in, in Marathon School. Um, so just as a quick um, update, and I can't do it without my glasses. Um, playgrounds are in. Sidewalks are going in. Out, it's a lot of outside work now, finishing touches. Um, they are slowly but surely turning over the building or training people to become ready to turn over the building. So um, HVAC and plumbing trainings are going to start soon. Um, There's a lot of talk about the dedication plaque and the ribbon cutting ceremony that I know you, you, you're very involved in. So, um, you know, there's a lot of excitement um, and they, they are anticipating a mid-May-ish turning the builder, building over to the to us. So wow. it's pretty, I know they're so very ahead of close. schedule and they're very close. The building is, you know, other than being dusty from a lot of the finishing touches, it looks like a school. It's very cool. Wow. Yes. Maybe just, that will just needs... before we leave, John. We might. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's exciting. Very cool. So that's that. And then um, the um, center school reuse <laughs> uh, committee met. And um, I did only stay for the first half hour of that meeting because I came to the turf field. Um, but um, in general, just some, you know, they're excited about the possibility of um, – keeping it sort of in the school community if it works out that we're able to move the administration offices over there. They're very enthusiastic about that as it are about Parks and Rec um, taking some of that building as well. So they feel like if it's going to get used and if it's going to be used for town offices that they're going to move forward with looking at ways to, to or finding out how much it's actually going to cost to turn it into an office building. So that's the next step on that. Um, and then last but not least, our policy subcommittee working group whatever it's called met obviously since this agenda is pretty much only <laughs> policy <laughs> from here on out um so you know we don't talk about that in detail but we got, we got a lot coming at you in five minutes <laughs> great so that's it a little cliffhanger there yeah for there five you go minutes. dot 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 
Do you have anything, John? No. Nancy. Thank you. I think I, I, either of you were at all of the meetings that I was at, <laughs> so I will okay. cede the time to you. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think the main one um, that I wanted to talk about is the chart forum, although you did remind me, Jen, I did go to a ribbon cutting um, meeting, so which was at the Marathon School. It was very exciting to so drive cool. up there for a meeting. Right. That was Just the first time. No, but we do have to get the giant scissors. That's on somebody's list. That is not my particular task. That was um, spoken about too at our meeting. Yes. Someone's getting the scissors. Someone is getting, getting the getting scissors. The <laughs> there is um, so the date for that is June 9th, and the time is probably one o'clock. I think there's a road race or something that day, so we're working mm -hmm. around that. I think it's one to four. Yeah. One to four. Um, so we are working on um, the details and the guest list and all of that. Um, just spoiler alert, John, I put both of us on the guest list since we won't be on the We will have anymore. to be guests. That's a good point. <laughs> well, I still had the opportunity yeah. to do that. I snuck us on. Um, Appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so that, that was really exciting, and um, that will be a great day in the community. So the other uh, one that I was going to report on is the turf forum. We had a – right here last night we had um, the – third, fourth forum, um, the public forum for the turf project. So we presented the final design, um, the the installer for the uh, and the manufacturer for the carpet and the infill both were here so that people had the opportunity to look and feel and touch all of that. So we had a great turnout. Um, HCAM was kind enough to tape it, and so we'll be posting that as soon as possible. Um, also, the Board of Selectmen has taken a vote on the funding, the method of funding for the article, so they have, they have expressed a preference for it to not be a debt exclusion, and so what that means for us is that um, we still need the two-thirds vote at town meeting, which we needed in either circumstance, but we now do not need a vote. That it will not be on the ballot, so the entire project will be decided at um, town meeting so people need to attend town meeting in order to vote on that particular project um, so and I think that that is it for my turf field for all of my liaison reports so unless I left something out we can move on I know um, Mina was going to talk to us she's been working on updating the new member orientation process uh, but she's unfortunately not feeling well tonight, so we'll skip over that. That's on our agenda. Um, and we'll move. I think we've postponed it as long as we can. We'll move right into new business and start with school committee policy, JLA wellness. So I will turn it over to you, Dr. Kavanaugh. Okay. So I have been working with Karen Reno, who is the SML for uh, PE Health and Wellness, K-12. And we started to look at the original wellness policy that was in place. And what we discovered was that it is actually this document right here that is 11 pages long and wildly dense. It contains everything from nutrition outlines to SMART goals. And we felt like this would probably be best served as a plan. And so we have pulled this out of the policy and renamed that a plan. And so it's not JLA any longer. It's JLA-1. And what we have done is um, condensed all of the material in that plan into this new policy. So the new policy is, as you see in your packet, it's a scant three paragraphs, but it's a nice, succinct summary, we think, of that plan. Okay. Does anybody have comments or questions on the policy? So just a, a comment in support of the change. I think that the the previous 11-page wellness policy was extremely, there was a ton of work that went into it, and it was extremely well-crafted. Um, but I can speak from some experience that in operation, as an 11-page policy, I think it imposed some inability to sort of make decisions at the principal level or others that maybe not weren't initially intended mm -hmm. and I think by not making it a policy or leaving the policy a little bit more general and having that plan I think that will hopefully avoid some of those because I think we had to have some like superintendent overrides and things like that for things like popsicles oh, yes. yeah. so um so I, I think that, that that this is a I think this is a smart operational move yes even a curricular change yeah. would have been part of a policy right you know yeah. which made it difficult to Right. Yep. right. Anybody else? So this has been sent out through School Messenger um, 
I don't know if we're ready to take action on it tonight. I did not receive any comment about this policy um, through email. So I would say it's, it's up to you all. We can take action tonight. We can bring it back for a second reading in May. It, I know we typically don't take action on the first reading, but it feels like the what we're taking action on is the sort of decision to make this, again, the more general policy and then mm -hmm. the, the plan that will follow it. So I, I personally am comfortable sort of making an exception to our normal process and making a motion to approve policy JLA wellness. Mm -hmm. Okay. I heard a motion. I'll second it. All right. Um, so that was a motion by Mr. Graziano, a second by Ms. Devlin. All in favor? Yes. 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 And I'm a yes. So that is unanimous. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, school committee policy, BIA, new school committee member orientation. Um, so we did put this in the packet for for a first reading. It's, um, let me get to it. I know Mina had wanted to review this and possibly um, enhance it, but she, so she's, she's with us tonight, but I did think it was a good opportunity for all of us just to look and maybe we could give her some feedback if there's anything in particular that we think is missing um, from the policy that we could recommend that she incorporate into what she's going to bring forward. Um, as I, as I read it, I thought it's actually, in my opinion, pretty comprehensive. I'm not sure we always do it. And so that might, that could be a, a challenge. But as I looked at it, you know, other than having people be given the following materials of all of our policies, I would say now, possibly at the time we wrote this, they, well, they were all online by then at any rate. Um, I think the material is um, is still pretty comprehensive and relevant. Were there any additions or subtractions that you guys saw? Uh, we didn't actually review this one. We, this was oh, you guys now. didn't. Okay, didn't, all right. So we can bring it back, and uh, we can. I will say I don't see on here the strategic plan. That would be something that I think a new school committee member yes. would want to review. Okay. Um, so the strategic plan, school improvement plans, I think I would add both of those. Um, but other than that, I think it's a pretty comprehensive list. Um, I okay. think the one thing I would say, and, and maybe this is, I don't know the MGL that's referenced, so maybe it's taken care of in that, but I look at like open meeting law and conflict of interest regulations. I mean, there's certain trainings we have to go through, like right. ethics and conflict of interest and those types of things that aren't specifically called out in here, so I don't know. Might be worth calling it out. Yeah, unless that's unless that's in MGL Chapter 71. Yeah, that's a good point. We should clarify that before we, because you're right, if it isn't, we should add that in. I mean, open meeting law is in here, but you're, you know, we have to, um, yeah. I don't believe they had the ethics training in 2006 that they do now that we do online. Right. Um, so, yep, that's yeah, a good point. It's every two years that has to be taken. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Did you make a note of that, too? I did. Thank you. I see that you're doing that. Excellent. Okay. So that's some feedback that we can provide for Mina as she starts her work. And we can move on to um, to the next policy, ADA, which is under old business. So we... Um, brought this well I'll let you I'll turn it over to the to the policy team great Go right thank ahead. you do you want to sure start with that one do you, sure so we um, took a look at this for a couple of reasons um, but I guess one of the big reasons is as you read it it doesn't sp speak like a policy it's more you know as it's titled a philosophy um, I think dr. Kavanaugh mentioned that it sort of is um, Part more like a strategic plan versus I think that I'm, I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think it was you that mentioned that. But it's not really a um, a policy mission statement. Yeah, mission statement exactly. So um, we so I actually looked in the MASC policy reference section, and there actually is no ADA policy in at MASC. So um, this has been around for a while. So maybe there was, but there is no longer. Um, there is something 
AB, that um, is titled The People and Their School District, which is basically a commitment to serving the district by the school committee, which maybe might be a more appropriate suggestion, but it's not necessarily exactly like this. So I think we talked about how this might just be something we dissolve, eliminate, yes. or make significant changes to if we wanted to keep it. As I looked at the date on this with 1993, right. it sort of happened just around the onset of ed reform. Mm -hmm. And so now with strategic plans and state frameworks and, you know, NEASC accreditation and all of those things, mission statements, I think that all of those places are where this is covered. Mm -hmm. And we do have both the vision and our strategic plan and the mission statements in all of our handbooks. So yes, it seemed like we were well Right, covered. exactly. And if we want to keep something that's similar to this, we can investigate policy A, B, which we currently don't have in our list of policies. If we want to have something that's sort of similar to this sort of commitment to, you know, dedication to the district, that is sort of encompassed in the, um, the school committee's responsibilities to the district. but. You know, going, that's a separate, I think, a separate conversation. Separate this policy, particular right. policy is something that we're looking at now that isn't really a policy. It's also confusing for people, like we <laughs> talked about at the last meeting, that's, it's titled ADA, but it has nothing to do with yeah, the yes. actual nothing. ADA law. Right. Right. Right, exactly. Absolutely no special education implications right. whatsoever. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, I'm comfortable, I don't know what is the right verb, but I, I'm comfortable retiring this policy. Is that what right. we What's would the word, be doing yeah. with it? Removing it from our policy. Removing it. And procedural, policy and procedure. <laughs> I would recommend Library. that. <laughs> and then we can determine if we want to look at policy we, A, B. We can look at, yeah, at, at sure. a future policy meeting. Yeah. That seems like a good conversation for next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, the summer. <laughs> so, <laughs> what language did we settle on? Motion to remove policy ADA from the Hopkinton School Committee policies. policies. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll make that motion, whatever I just I'll said. Second it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Motion by Ms. Devlin and second by Mr. Graziano. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Great. Thank you. We're cruising right along. So, so, yep, so the next one is policy ADDA, criminal record information. Right, and you can see in the do you ha the policy, there are only a few changes from the last meeting that we had in there in blue. There are some, ver some verb changes, assure to ensure, uh, ensure to ensure, and then the bigger thing that we had talked about comes under scope of policy, and we had discussed last time the implications of it says because it says this policy applies to all individuals 18 years of age and older and we had talked about whether or not to include people who are under the age of 18 and there were actually some mass general laws related to that 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 we need to we, we should make it inclusive that people that are coming have the potential for direct and unmonitored contact even if they're under the age of 18 most of the time it wouldn't pop anything at all because they're, if they're tried in a juvenile court, it would be a sealed record. But if something, if they're tried as an adult, it would pop up in a quarry. And that is something we, that we would want to know if somebody had been tried mm -hmm. as an adult and they were coming in to mentor kids or something of that nature. Okay. So is that, mm -hmm. did I catch yep, that's all good, the... That's a good summary. And... and are those the, the mass insurance. general laws what are included in the legal references mm -hmm. already? Okay. Um, any questions or discussion? No. I have actually one question. Um, and if we don't know the answer, that's fine, but we can figure it out. Um, what do we do? Does this policy also cover sorries, or do we need to have a policy that includes that? So that's like the, the sexual offender? The, oh, this check. does not cover sex offenders. I'm not sure. I've heard them used separately, so I just would want to make sure. I, if that's covered oh, under Corey, that's I fine. I see what you're saying. So if, if someone not, 
Yeah, I, yes, I think that that would it pop would be with, the, with the Acori, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because it's all it's criminal yes. records. Okay. So if there's any thing on their asking. record, I think it would pop up. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. So are we ready to make a motion? I think we are ready to make a motion. Okay. Is the motion printed in there? It is not. So. Okay. <laughs> I would move to approve policy ADDA criminal record investigation. Um, as amended, or no? Did we do well, as, as, pre okay, yeah. as, as presented? presented? As presented in the packet. Okay. Second. All right. Um, okay. Motion by Mr. Graziano. Second by Ms. Cavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. And I did not mention this, but I did not receive. Well, I think I did. I didn't receive comment on any of these policies from, um, and no emails on any of them. So. Okay can apply that going forward all right so our next policy school committee policy kf community use of school facilities this is here for a second reading um so who's taking this one on yeah. sure so we, um after our last meeting we talked about um removing the we were using two different nouns on that <laughs> At, on that meeting groups and categories so we decided to streamline that and, and just use the term group and we're going to remove the groups from the policy so that um, the um, administration is in control of how groups are categorized or how, how various groups are categorized um, and that the policy itself stands alone in terms of um, making the rules those groups sort of have to adhere to okay right um, and let me see and other than that that is the updates I think right. Did I miss so, well and just that you the kf-2 which is a which is not a policy it's a procedure that we reviewed last year is included just for comparison but also be, to highlight where the groups in the category conflict you see where it says group one versus category one so to make those different and then I think it was Mina's suggestion at the last meeting to pull out of the non-revenue generated programs it also changes it from the to the Hopkinton public schools from the school committee uh, so that it does not have to come back here to mm -hmm. groups that wish to be included on that list would not have to come back through the school committee but they would go through the superintendent's office to be included and in that it would be kept with the application to use the facility okay. so that uh, this in this particular case there was a few uh, some email correspondence that we had regarding the hdca and that it, 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 for example, we had discussed that they, there were many things that they had done with the schools that might make them appropriate for to be approved by the superintendent's office to be included on this very same list for this application. Mm -hmm. So that the, the one just language suggestion, I, I think yep. typically where it says so recognized by the Hoppington Public Schools, mm -hmm. I think in other policies where we have delegated to the superintendent, we've said yep. as recognized by the superintendent or their designee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Because so, I think so, Hopkinton right, Public so change Schools just to... sort of raises a question of like, well, who is that? It could be. So can you repeat that again? I would say um, so recognized by the superintendent or their designee. Okay. And that language is in that last paragraph on the first page too. Right. So that it would be the same thing. Are you are you talking about the See, policy, the procedure? No, in the policy it says superintendent and or. But, or his her designee so we could just mirror that language in these categories as well our groups I am, I am, is this, this is this is up higher is that yeah. um oh right yes yeah the other thing that I just noticed is in that last group it actually in the first bullet still says category and it oh, yeah. says it a couple it times. Should be group. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, it's that way in the in the procedures as well as the policy. So see, the right there. Oh, good call. Okay, okay. So okay. double check category. Yeah, and it's like that in the, the policy policy okay. as well. Um, do.
Yeah, I that think that's I think that's good. The one question, so the reason we opened this policy up actually in the first place was about the turf fields because we wanted to make it clear that if you want to rent the turf fields, you do not go through this policy. So we changed. That's why we added grass fields. Mm -hmm. um, in this paragraph about the turf fields, I'm wondering if we need to make it a little bit more clear that scheduling of the turf fields should be addressed um, according to the requirements of the memorandum of understanding with it's a cumbersome letter but a sentence but maybe a sentence in this third paragraph that specifies if you want to in better language than this but if you want to to um, rent the turf fields you have to refer to the MOU for how that happens so if it's essentially if it's school sports teams you go through the right. athletic director's office if it's not you go through parks and rec but and then to add that to the policy cross-reference, mm -hmm. our MOU with, um, yep. with Parks and Rec. So I think that that would cover it. Okay. And again, I just, you know, uh, I'll reiterate what I said last time, which is all of these groups that are included in these, not categories, groups now, do tremendous, provide tremendous support to the schools, and um, they all do a phenomenal job. I just want to make it clear that anybody, some of them I know have insurance, some of them I know do not have insurance. I just want to make sure that everybody understands being included in this group doesn't waive any of the other requirements mandated by the facilities use policy and procedures. So whatever signatures, you know, whatever things you have to cite, the whole, the old harmless or the insurance or whatever all of those requirements still apply it's this is really just about how much re how much they do or do not pay per hour to use the building um, that's the only the only thing that they would be exempted from by being in any of these buckets is the, a fee the actual rental fee, yeah. right that the still in most instances would be held to the um, custodial fees exactly unless, unless yes. they're meeting well Right, it can be covered by yes. the custodians. Right, so I just wanted I just wanted to make that clear. And oftentimes they will partner with each other, and you know it always gets worked it, it out. I just want to make yes. sure all the other rules still apply that, that the people are clear on that. Groups that have not had insurance often will partner with the ones right. that do, because well, the, certainly or all with these the don't. the school itself, or with the school itself. Yeah. So yes. okay, all right. So it sounds like there's a little bit of just final tweaking to do on that one. So I would suggest that we bring that back. Mm -hmm. In um, at our next meeting, okay. but it feels that I thought that was a very good um, suggestion. It, it's much easier for new groups like the HDCA to, as right. they as they're formed, to right. go through the superintendent's office than through the cumbersome po process of going through the school committee. The policy doesn't have to be open then, and exactly. it doesn't have to go through three readings and X number of things. That and they certainly have done a number of things for the school. So oh, that sure. would be clear for Dr. Kavanaugh, or hopefully in a long, long time, your successor to be able to look at new groups that come in. That's another list, another thing on your list of tasks. Or your designee. That's right, or, or your designee. designee. <laughs> um, okay, so is there anything else on that policy or we're ready to move along? Okay, so um, next is school committee policy IJNDB, Interse Internet Acceptable Use. I don't know if is Mr. Gosh is planning to come. I thought that he was. Maybe okay, it's so just why don't we the skip? Timing. Yeah, we're we're, we're so we're ahead of schedule, skipping. so we'll we'll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine with Mike. Uh, so we will skip over that one for the moment and come back to it. Um, so that brings us to school committee policy JICFB bullying, which is our second reading. So Dr. Kavanaugh and Ms. Kavanaugh. I don't know who's going to take this. All right. I'm fine with that. Um, so in when we met, you know, we did not make a lot of changes to this. Um, one of the things that we looked at was that um, the word staff is defined repeatedly throughout. So after we mentioned the first time, educator, administrator, school nurse, all of that, we removed those. Um, one of the things that we also saw in here is that this policy needs to be reviewed, or at least the, I'm sorry, the plan needs to be re reviewed every two years. So that's something that we're going to uh, pick up our step on a little bit. 
and I will talk a little bit about the plan that goes along with this policy. So we did have a group, a very large group, go through the plan and the plan was originally written in 2010 when Deval Patrick signed this into law. We had a group in Hopkinton in 2014 that went through that again and now in 2018 we had a group and I'm going to take a moment to thank all of the people who worked on that group if that would be okay. Um, just because a lot of work went into it. So we had school resource officer Phil Powers, Denise Hildreth, Hopkinton Youth and Family Services, uh, Jim Casey, Jane, G Jane Gomes, Kathy Bain, Josh Hanna from here at the high school. Uh, we had some parents, Don Ronan, um, Amanda Robichaud, and Manya Stancio. Uh, we had Karen Reno, our SML, Vanessa Bellello, principal at Hopkins School, uh, Nicole Robinson, who is a guidance counselor at Elmwood, and Nancy Cavanaugh and I, and we had two students in our group, Rakoya Alashabi and Tim Fargiano, and I think I have gotten everyone on our list, so it was, it was a great group of people to work with, and I think, um, so that final document went out today, and I'm hoping that it will be um, sort of blessed by everyone who was on that that writing committee, and then Ashok can get that onto our website. So I don't know if I've missed anything on the policy itself that we looked at. No, but this is a, a, just to highlight for the others that were not there, a case very much like the wellness where the plan is much bigger than what we would want to yes. put in the actual policy. Right. So were there, were there substantial changes made to the plan? Uh, yeah, a few. One of the things that uh, we did take out, there were um, scenarios that had been in there. What does bullying, what does cyberbullying look like? And we had a group that went in and revised all of those to make them more contemporary. And when we submitted it to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, they recommended that we take them out because <laughs> they said sometimes it's actually more confusing for people to understand bullying based on those scenarios than, than not. And I think some of the people in our group were actually pleased that they came out because they were nebulous in places, I think. Um, the other thing that they had asked for us to put in was uh, the, the notion of a reporter, because we very often think about the target and the aggressor, but they've had instances now where the reporter has needed some kind of protection as well. So that was an add-on. Um, we also updated the online, to, to in, yes. put the link is all over the place on the website, to make it easier for people to report, because there is a feeling that bullying is not reported mm -hmm. uh, in some instances, underreported. And then I think the final thing that took quite a bit of time with going through and just checking all of the footnotes, because yes. some of the links you know, had been updated by the department and by Mass General Law, so that was quite a bit of work. Excellent. Okay. So is there any, are there any other questions or discussion? Are we ready to vote on this too? All right. So I guess I am ready for a motion to approve policy IJNDB bullying. Nope. I just read the wrong one to approve policy JICFB bullying as amended. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay, so motion by Ms. Kavanaugh, second by Mr. Graziano. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, and why don't we keep on going and we'll wait for Mr. Ghosh because we're like honestly an hour ahead of schedule, I, which I just jinxed. Yeah, I feel like you may have jinxed it. Um, Overnight travel requests, Dr. Kavanaugh. Okay, so we have two of those. We have um, the Middle School Robotics World Championships, and those are in um, Kentucky at the end of April and early May. And we also have the Business Professionals of America. You remember that they were here at our last meeting, and very impressive. And they would like to travel to Dallas, Texas on May 9th, from May 9th to May 13th. Okay. Does anybody have questions about the requests? No, they both look like yeah. great programs. No questions, yeah. yeah. I think it's great. It's great for the kids. Okay. So I guess I'm ready for a motion to approve the request for overnight travel for Middle School Robotics World Championships to Kentucky and Business Professionals of America trip to Dallas, Texas. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. So, motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Devlin. All in favor? Yes. 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 
Okay, so that is unanimous and passes as well. Um, the Gale Associates contract amendment, we actually need Ms. Rothermick for, and she is not available tonight. So I, I'm going to suggest that we bring that one back in May at our mm -hmm. next meeting on May 3rd. So um, we will postpone that. And then oh, sorry, I lost my next page of my agenda. Oh. Because I think we're up to. Do we have the last page? Did they have to do that? The, the gift from the BAA. Well, that, is that in our okay. items by consensus? But that means we have it. another opportunity for public comment. I have really. I've gotten things turned upside down on my table. Give me a second. So wow, we are way ahead. Yeah, we are. Um, so. My guess is that Mr. Ghosh here Mr. has no idea that we're this far ahead of schedule. So do you do you have the ability to text him and just see, like, if he wants to, if he's on his way, but if not, if he's comfortable with us waiting until May 3rd, we could, we could do that as well. Um, so while we're, while you're doing that, um, this is our second opportunity for public comment. Is anyone here from the public that would like to comment? <laughs> Only Mr. Tarosian. It looks like he might have said no, Mike. <laughs> Can we do the items by consent? Yeah. yeah, I'm just letting her finish her text because right. she reads it to us. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then we are ready for items. In this yes. I <laughs> the they don't. Um, so we're ready for items by consensus. Dr. Kavanaugh. Okay. Okay. So I will recommend that the school committee move to approve the items by consensus as outlined below. So moved. Second. S second. Okay. So motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Kavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 So that is unanimous. Um, why don't we give it a minute here for Mr. Ghosh to see if he'll, if he is on his way. Okay. And if not, mm -hmm. this can't be, we've started this in October, right? Is there like, yeah, we started in October. Is there a problem to postponing it? Um, no, I think it's. I, mean, I think we're in a place now where it actually looks pretty good. I mean, there was only one change, I think, made, or two changes made from the last iteration to this one, right? Okay. Yeah, the blue were the, change, the current changes, right? Right. Yeah. They seem minimal. There's not a lot of blue. Yes. So that final sentence on page two. And maybe the other one is blue just because it's a hyperlink in there, social media guidelines. Changed something to employees. Mm -hmm. Were we going to look at the social media guidelines? I know that's not required as part of voting the policy. I feel like that was why we were waiting. Though. I do too. Okay. Um, because, yeah, otherwise the, the update was pretty minimal. All right, so at least we don't object to any of the updates, right? No one has any concerns about that. So why don't we, um, rather than vote, because I do think we were going to look at the um, guidelines, why don't we bring that back May 3rd, and we'll just let him know he yes. doesn't have to go out in the rain tonight. Perfect. I can hear it. Is that the rain? No, that I, sounds good. I, I like the music sound we had earlier. Yes, it was masked by earlier by the music. So, all right, I think actually then... We are ready to adjourn. So it is 8.25, and I just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second? Second. Motion by Ms. Devlin, second by Mr. Graziano. All in favor? Yes. yes. Okay. So thank you. We um, have concluded our regular business, and our next meeting will be Thursday, May 3rd, right here at 7 o'clock. We wish everybody a very happy and healthy and safe April vacation. And uh, special thanks to Mr. Trojan for doing video duty on his birthday. So thank you very much. Good night.